We're building a wild pool system on the top floor of a house, 24 feet deep in the water. We're doing all kinds of fun things, some waterfalls, wet walls. Catch up on the old stuff, follow the new. We love you guys. Back to work. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. All right, guys, it's time to fill the pool. Been 24 hours of madness, late night. You always want to turn this real slow. If you crank it off really fast at high volume, you can hammer this valve system, actually explode the pipe. So you take your time shutting it off. But you always want to clean it out because you have rust, debris that gets sediment in the bottom of these lines, especially at the end of this new development. New developments. I've actually had one when they lay the pipe, sometimes rats, mice, will get in the pipes and then as they're hooking it all up, the, the critters stay away from the contractors who then glue the pipes up. And then when you turn this on, you shoot them out like a can and out the end of this thing. And you think a rock or a literally explosion went off. So you always want to be careful opening them up. Do it slow and then slowly work it out and then let the debris shoot out. We got a meter on here. Spanish Fork City uh, lets you lease the meter go through a little course on operation, which I've done a few times for various cities. And then we got this water meter here. We should have about 125,000 gallons of water going into the pool. So if I had to do it with the garden hose, we'd be here a few weeks. It's kind of a lot of water, but I've got almost 400, 450 feet of two and a half inch line. We're gonna run it down the street. I got a place to tie it into the very bottom of the pool. Oftentimes people will put a fire hose or even garden hoses right over the edge of the pool. And then they come back later and notice they've rinsed the aggregate since we actually just finished putting the pebble finish on the pool today. You want to wash and clean it to get the color you want and the texture smooth or rough, and then you stop. Well, a lot of times people will drop that line in, crank it on, and then they'll rinse too much of the finish off and they'll have a really rough area. It's hard on your feet um, and discolors it. So I've got my pool set up. So this line is actually piping into a three inch main that splits to all my pool main drains. And then it's gonna come out from the bottom of the pool up slowly. So it's gonna fill the pool fast, but there's no fast water racing over all the new finish of the pool. So this is gonna fill from the bottom up really quickly i'm going to get a picture of this and then we're going to watch my water bill go up because they charge me by the gallon you guys know the drill go slice some line back to work And it's coming up on midnight. We still got armies going. We're pulling off the, covering off the windows. You can see the blue in the background. That's the tape on the outside protecting from the contractors working on that side. Um, we're starting to peel off all the coverings, clean the tile. We got the fire hoses ready. We're going strong. I got a few of these guys extra motivated, so we're gonna get her done. Back to work. All right, we're getting closer. It is now just after midnight. 
The superstar workers are here still going strong. Got some great pool guys here. And I can hear over there in the background the crane winding up. Matter of fact, there it is up in the air. We are about ready to hook up the ladders and lower the ladders in. We got to get the pumps finished draining out the water, scrub the bottom, drop the ladders, and start filling it up. Back to work. Scaffolding is going away. And there's the second half of one of the scaffolding. the bubbles. I knew there'd be a little bit of the blue coming out. Not bad. A little bit of sediment. We'll let the filters chase that out. All right guys, just watching this and checking the timer. That's right, we're flying just over 200 gallons a minute into the pool. I can divide the total number of gallons in the pool by that, and on lower time, I get to go to sleep. Stay up all night, watch all the lines, make sure everything goes good. Back to work. Oh, there's my beautiful wife, keeping it wet, making sure it doesn't want to crack while we wait for it to fill. You always want to make sure you keep it damp and cold so it cures really slow. Well, the night continues. Be up all night long, which is not uncommon. But tonight is to literally just spray water on the walls to keep it damp. And you got the LED lights down there. Surprisingly, it's only coming up on midnight and that is already 10 feet deep in the deep section already. So, 14 more to go. All right, Dex, show me a flip off that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Dex was the first one in the pool. <laughs> Dex, the first one in the pool. I like the kitty pad. <laughs> the kitty pad. I can swim here. <laughs> awesome. Dex said to me, he says, hey, if you got a spare change of clothes, I'm jumping in. So he ran and jumped in. Woohoo! All right, Dex, show me a flip off that thing. <laughs> Hold on, we're going to turn on the waterfall lights even though the waterfall isn't plumbed yet. I'm almost done. Let's see. All right. Now we got the waterfall lights on for you. Just no waterfall. <laughs> I didn't know about those. <laughs> 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 <Woo -hoo! laughs> I love it. Good job. <laughs> Alright guys, Sunday 
the afternoon project, we're building the patio for a outdoor fire pit. Now up on top of the pool deck, I've got a natural gas fire pit. This one's gonna have real wood. I'll build a little stand for some logs and things. I want a place to roast marshmallows with a natural fire. So what I've done is I've set a center plate and a disc. I just used a cutting wheel that was dull from before to set a center disc. And then I made this aluminum bar as my screen line so I could hook it on that stake and spin it around. And I'm, I'm able to do that and then screen a perfect circle. Now, if I was doing a flat patio, I use these bars and I line them up in rows and screen between it, then pull them out and compact it, put them back in and do it a couple times and come up. What's nice about doing a circle is I actually want the circle to slope all directions. One of the things that drives me nuts on patios, I know it's around fire pits, sometimes they'll try and do it flat with straight lines and then they don't really get a slope to it because it's hard to use straight hard bars to do lines and then get it to slope all directions. It doesn't really work well. So on a circle where I want everything to slope away from the raised fire pit, I don't want that water running up against it and having a little ice layer or just water stains on it. I want it to go out. Using a center point, this aluminum is a screen edge, and then I just put a level on the screen edge and I drag it around in the sand. And uh, I got some great helpers helping me today. I had a motorcycle accident. My back is really bad, L1 through L5 or pretty well destroyed. So I'm having a hard time just watching. So I'm helping where I can, but I got some great helpers and I'm showing them something they've never done before. It's turning out really, really well, but I'm able to just set the level with just a partial bubble out and then go in a circle and make a perfect radius outbound taper for the water. Uh, now I'm using it to make my Sharpie line. If you look down here, you can see this black line. I'm able to make a mark and just walk it around in a circle and drag my line. Once I've got the line, I can pull those marked blocks, take them up on my saw, cut them perfect, and then I'll go ahead and do a dark border with half blocks all turned outward, making a clean edge so that I don't have little slivers anywhere that can move. I'll use a dark edge half block and it'll be fanned outward and we'll get the circle done. So it's going really well. I couldn't be happier. So I'll help out, give a little guidance. We'll have this done in a couple hours. Start a fire pit ring. You guys know the drill. Back to work. All right, guys. So what I'm doing now, set the pavers yesterday on my Sunday afternoon. I had a, an hour before my next meeting showing these guys how to do this concrete. They'll finish it up. But I just dug a small trench it's really only about five inches by five inches average. There's a little taper here of concrete. Um, it's just to hold two things. One, to make sure the pavers don't move and there's no dirt sloughing off. I, it drives me nuts when I see pavers into loose soil and then later, years later, they're all falling into the garden. So I've put up this plastic guide. These really don't last very well, but I use them to put a bunch of pins in and keep the soil from sloughing out from underneath while I do concrete. And then I do the trench, put the fabric, pour the concrete, work it around. And then when I do the fabric on this area, I can lift it up, tuck the fabric under this one, and then you don't get that really annoying thing that everyone sees on fabric where the fabric lifts up around all your sidewalks and, and garden areas and all the weeds are coming up at the edges and there's no fabric protection. So I always dig a trench against all my sidewalks, fences, and tuck the fabric in, concrete it in. I leave a little bit of room here so now I can put some gravel rock or decorative rock over top of it, not see the concrete, but not have any weeds coming up around this or any of the other boxes. So it's really simple, it's fast, it's cheap. I bet I don't spend 300 bucks in concrete and an hour's time we'll have it done. You guys know the drill. Back to work. All right, we've got it all sanded. We got the fabric down, the concrete border that will be hidden when we push the rocks back up. And I've got the fabric so I can lift up, tuck the other layer of weed felt down underneath it. 
and I don't have the edges of the fabric coming up around the fire pit area. So we're getting ready to lay out the fire pit. So I'm still using the same center spike. I've made my mark for the inside of the circle. The X is to the outside where the pavers will go. And I'll just drag this aluminum around, finish the circle, start laying pavers to the outside for the raised fire pit. You guys know the drill. About to work. All right, guys, I just got my base layer down. I've glued it down with a uh, paver glue. It's unbelievable how strong this is. I could use a mortar and grout it down like brick, but if you bump it or hit it, and especially in Utah where we get these heavy freezes, sometimes if you get water inside and you get even the slightest bit of expansion, you pop those mortar joints on an exterior build like this. So I like to use this, gives it a little bit of movement and flex without cracking. However, once this sets up, I've got the base down, it's glued down. I'm gonna let that set up a bit and then I'm gonna start building up. I've got an outer wall and an inner wall. I put all the gaps to the inside, the visual side, all the bricks are touching on the outside of the circle. They're also touching on the inside where the fire pit, uh, where the fire will be. And there's big gaps in the middle because of the way the blocks are tapered and you kind of rotate them around to keep them as small as possible, but make sure that the blocks are all making contact like that rather than the big gap like that. Anyway, once I get the base course down, I'll start filling the inside of all those gaps with the non-shrink grout. So I'm gonna have it all glued together, grouted in the middle. Then I'm gonna put a big giant thick quartzite slab on the top and I'll seal that up watertight. So technically all the water will go over the edge and drip beyond the block so I don't get water in it. Um, but it will get some but I really wanna keep everything on the outside so nothing gets inside and tries to heave and push the blocks out. So uh, this should work really good. I got a lot more to do. We'll give this a few minutes, put in some non-shrink grout, back to work. Guys, I've got the long street grout done. What I'm gonna do is I'm only gonna pour it up past the first block and part way into the second. If I try and pour it all at once, it's gonna get too much pressure and push out and kind of leak out through the sides. I don't have a lot of cleanup to do. But I'm gonna go ahead and start working up gluing and putting in the grout as I go up so it can kind of set up just a little bit and I'll just stay ahead of it. If I time it right, I can go nonstop without having to have any breaks go all the way to the top and cap it off. So I got the grout, let's get it poured in. You guys know the drill, back to work. You can also see I got my gravel bed. I pulled out the blocks out of the middle so that the fire pit can drain. Ah, oh, this is perfect. Thought I had it a little too runny, but I like it. I got lucky on that mix. I'll get my hammer, tap it, it'll shake it down in, get it to vibrate, come up a couple more layers with glue, repeat all the way to the top. You guys know the drill, back to work. All right guys, almost done. Everything's still wet inside there, but I was able to do the glue, the non-shrink grout, everything as I went, so I never had to stop. I'm setting on the last, mortar base and it's hard to see but I've got an actual TP shape in that high in the middle so that when I set that last stone on when I push it squishes out the sides and if I did it right it should look like that where it's just kind of making a mess everywhere which means I've got no air pockets and full contact everywhere the TP squishes goes to the outside falls on the floor like that once I get it set, get them all leveled, perfect spaced, I'll go around and clean up all my messes, get a bag and tuck those in, bag tuck it, grout it, clean it, wash it. Tomorrow, throw some fire in it. You guys know the drill. Back to work. All right, guys, I'm done, at least for half of my projects for the day. This took a little longer than I thought, so 
I'll be running on floodlights on the next section. This is a project would have been great. Um, usually on Sundays, I have my kids give me a hand. They had other things going on today. So today, this was my project. I've got to do a big patio on the back of the house over there with some big two inch thick by two foot slabs of white quartzite similar to this. I'm gonna tackle that next. I've got this cleaned up. I feel really good about it. Everything grouted in good. The top on this, when I pushed it down tight and used a mallet and worked the way around and got it all perfectly level, it had a ton of the grout coming off all the sides. There's no air pockets, nowhere for water to go and puddle and freeze and crack things. So I feel really good about it. Um, <laughs> my fingers are all pruned up um, from scrubbing. We had to scrub all the pavers inside out, get all that grout off, but it's clean. We can let it cure up. I'm gonna wash up a little bit, grab a quick bite to eat. I got, I don't know, six or 10 more hours on another project. So we'll turn the floodlights on in a little bit. You guys know the drill. Let's get back to work.